Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master, Asagar the Eternal. For what's going to be a video, it should be a quick video after a long whiteboard hiatus. Okay, I have something pretty interesting to show you today in regards to the single digit code and cube geometry. Okay, um, the single digit code as we know is the single digits of 0 through 9. Okay, and those 0 through 9 are 10 numbers. 0 counts as a number. And the root of it is 0 through 9. And what we have here, I showed in other videos how this applies to the Yggdrasil. Okay, and this is what this is. This is the Yggdrasil model. It's sort of like a uh, Kabbalistic Tree of Life inspired model. Uh, it uses the uh, Flower of Life geometry in you know what I mean, and you go through the numbers. And the way that goes is, and, and I, 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 as I, sh as I uh, showed in other videos, the uh, Yggdrasil is actually a cube. And these two points, the outermost points, are actually the center of the cube. Okay, and how that would go is you, you, you put zero up here, go zero, one, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, and then nine. And the reason you put 2 here is because this is a 3D cube and one of these numbers goes in the corner that you can't see. And that's why you put two numbers there. And, that, and then when you realize that these two points are the same point in the center of the cube, it reveals the cube. And that's all fine and good. There's you know, nothing really special so far. But now, what happens when you... Combine cube geometry to the ten digits of the uh, single digit code. It does something amazing, and we've seen this before here. Here's the root one. You go zero in the middle, and then you go out, and you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine goes back into the middle. Okay, and when that happens, and we and we know by now that zero and nine are the same number. Okay, but now when you extend this and keep it going to the next the next set, the next set, which is 10, you know, you, you keep counting, so now what you do is 10 goes in the center of the cube, okay, and then you put 11 here, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and then 19 goes back into the center of the cube, okay, now what, what you're going to notice is the beginning number reduces to a 1, and the, and the number that goes back to the center of the cube is 19, which also reduces to a 1. So what's happening is the center of the cube starts out with the, any given number that it starts out with. In this case, in the root, it's 0, and it goes to its cycle, and 9 goes back in, which is the, ref, the uh, reflection of itself. And then when you jump to the next, the next uh, level, it starts with 10, and it goes to its cycle, and it comes back to 19, which is also a reflection of itself. So now what we have in the center of here is two ones, which becomes two. So now here's the amazing part that shows just a perfect symmetry of this beautiful system of numbers that was discovered so long ago. Okay. Now what happens is, now you have two in the center. When you cross the corners, all the corners reduce to two as well. Uh, and you can see that really well on this model of the Yggdrasil. It's why I included this, because this template is really good for a lot of reasons. Uh, because it shows you um, quite a bit that I'll get into in a second. But with the cross oppositions, it's, this is perfect for the cross oppositions. So what you have is the outer ones, which are the, the center of the cube. you got a 1 and a 1. And then uh, these cross oppositions reduce to 2. So 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You know, and then they all do this. So... All these corners reduce to two, these corners reduce to two, these corners reduce to two, and of course the center, which is two corners, also reduce to two. So it's showing the reflection of itself all throughout the structure of geometry. And this continues too. This d doesn't just do this for this set. So then the next set after you finish this would of course be the, the 20s. So what, what would happen in that case is very simple. So you finish with 19. My dogs are outside freaking out. So then what you do is start with 20. So now you got 20, then you go 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, and then 29. 
okay, and then 30 and so on and so forth. And so it always does it does this. So what's happening is anytime you start with a number, so in this case it's 10, which reduces to a 1, it, it goes out through its cycle around the cube and it comes back the exact reflection of itself, which is a 1 and 1. When you do a 2, the 2 goes in here, it goes through its cycle, and it comes back with the reflection of itself again with uh, 29. So you put 20 here, it goes through its cycle, comes back with 29. And then 30 would be the same thing. You put 30 here, it goes through its cycle, and it comes back with 39. 40, 50, 60, 70, and all the same. And it even does the same thing when you jump into triple digits, any number. This goes to infinity, and it shows the reflection of itself all the time. But this is what's really so amazing about this is that it shows the reflection of itself with itself. So anytime a number in, in this, what this complements is the work of Walter Russell. This is sort of why I'm, I'm mentioning this because the foundation of Walter Russell's work is the cube sphere model of uh, cosmology. And um, one of the things that he says is that light doesn't move, light only reflects. So basically the, the idea of light moving is just a, uh, uh, an, an illusion and his model is that light doesn't reflect. It, uh, I'm sorry, light doesn't move, it only reflects. And what we're seeing this here with this Q model, this is like the, the starting number in this case is a 10, it goes back, cycles through, comes back to 19, which is just a 1 reflecting itself. All the corners are, ref, are a, a reflection of themselves when, when they reduce to the same number that ends up being in here. See, it doesn't reflect the same number it starts with. See, so right now it's a 10, which is a 1, so these corners don't add up to 1. It only reflects what it is when it comes back to itself. So it starts out with a 10, which becomes a 1, goes to its cycle, comes back as 19, which is another 1, which is a reflection of the initial 1, and then the corners corroborate that with the reduction in becoming 2. And if it was a 3, Say you put a 3 here, what would happen? It starts out with 3, goes to its cycle, comes back another 3, which is a 6, and the corners in that case would produce a 6. Every corner would produce a 6. So it's a complete circuit into of itself, and it only works when it's a complete circuit. And, uh, and that, so that's the amazing aspect of it. And, and getting back to this Yggdrasil model, one of the reasons why this model is so good is because um, when you apply the single digit code to this template, it's very hard to mess up. Okay, so, so if you just took a cube like this and started constructing, throwing numbers around, it would be very easy to mess up the numbers because the cross oppositions only work if you lay out the template the proper way. So if I just threw numbers all over the place, the odds of that that, you know, finding the right pattern would be very difficult. But when you use it with the, the Yggdrasil template, it's very hard to mess up because this is a 2D cube and you start, you know, I'll just start with here uh, with 10, so you put your 10 or 1 or 0, whatever it is, but 10 and 11 and 12, 13, then in the middle you put the 2, 14, 15, then 16, 17, 18, 19. And when you do it like this, it make, it sort of forces you into constructing it the same way every time. So what you do is you Start, you know, it, it, so it forces you to use the same template all the time, which is just going for the, the, the if you align this with the, uh, the uh, proper gender assignment, you know what I mean, like the new, middle being neutral and feminine and masculine, and you keep the same parameter when you construct it, it builds it the same way. And that, when you do that, it reveals its magic in that way. But if you, did, if you just constructed it using cubes without this 2D template, it would be very easy to mess up and you wouldn't necessarily figure it out as easily. But when you use this model, it makes it easy to do that. So that's really it. And uh, I just want to get a couple of quick things uh, that I have covered before, but I just, just want to get into some, seeing we're on a cube theme here. Um, this I covered before, but this is very important. I, I covered this in the Agus Yalmer video, but that video was so long, and this was just a little piece of it. But what happens is, with the cubes, getting into the cubes, there's two root cubes, there's actually two cubes, there's a feminine cube and a masculine cube. And what happens is, with this feminine cube, this is one, this is one cube, and then, if this was the center of a cube, it takes 27 cubes to get to its next fractal of symmetry. So, 
So the, yeah, yeah, this one here for the one cube. Its next fractal is 27 blocks for an equal cube. And after that, it's uh, 125 for equal symmetry, and, and it keeps going on. And what happens is that uh, produces an infinite code of 198 to infinity. Okay. Now, this other cube, the masculine cube, is the 8. It, it takes 8 cubes to form equal symmetry here, and this is starting with a core of 0. And then the next level after that is 64 for equal symmetry, uh, and the next level after that is 216 for equal symmetry. And that number 216 is very popular. I know a lot of people have videos where they talk about 216. There are people who think that 216 is, a, uh, is the number of God. They say that. Um, but it's really not, because not, 216 is just a 9. So. Uh, so now what happens with this, and this produces a code of 819. Okay, but re what really happens is this. So you have this root of a 1 here, there's 1 cube, and the next level is, the, the real next level of symmetry would be the 8 for this, and then it would jump to this side with 27, then this side with 64, then this side with 125, and this side with 216. So what it's really doing is producing a code, a, a code that repeats of 1, 8, and then 9, and it's, going, it's oscillating back and forth from cube structures like this. But what makes this different is um, because you, you can have two different structures. Like this cube right here in its next level 27 would be like a fucking Rubik's Cube. You know, like that little game in the 80s that, you know, be that. It would produce this structure. And this is a cube of 8 and it has a zero center. It has no cube in the middle. It just has a zero space in the middle where these cubes meet. And this is it. But this is the root of, this, of the uh, single... The, the, the uh, numbers here, 1 and 8, so we see that 1, 8. And over here, I also covered this in a, uh, my Osron Tarot Spiral 11 video, the second half of it, and this is pretty important too. This is sort of what inspired this thought in, in a way, is that the cube is best represented by 369, not 666. I mean, 666 doesn't even really link to the cube. There's no real link to it. I mean, 666 is associated with Saturn, and Saturn has you know cube geometry linked to it because of the North Pole of Saturn and other things, but there's really no number correlation to the cube in 666. Really, uh, the carbon atom is said you know, carbon 12 is said to have six protons, six neutrons, and six electrons. But when you realize there's really no such thing as an electron, it, that really blows that out of the water. But uh, and the greats say this, you know, Tesla, all the people who discovered, all the people who refined our current uh, system of, uh, uh, our current system of uh, 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 electricity, Tesla, Faraday, Steinmetz, um, a few other guys, you know, uh, they all said that, that, that there's no electrons, and there's no such thing as electron, it's basically field perturbations. And there's a guy out there called Ken Wheeler, who I've been listening to lately, who, who, extrapolates or expounds on these ideas. It's pretty interesting. But, uh, but anyway, so here's a, here's a square here. And you got this, this square. Each corner of a square is 90 degrees. 9 times 4 is 360. Okay, And then 360 times the 6 faces of cube is 2160, which is 1 12th of the great year. Okay, So now, when you take this cube, so basically you could say that if, applying this to the Osron Tarot Spiral, you could say that each house could be represented by a cube, and then you got 12 cubes for the whole year, and all this stuff. And what's also very interesting about this is the, because we know the Osron Tarot Spiral, the uh, tarot pit, uh, I'm sorry, the tarot trumps correspond to the cube, which I get into in the OTS. But now you can also apply the pips now to the cube, because now you can have the fucking ace, uh, say the ace of wands go through the cycle, and then the ten of wands comes back. So now the pips can apply to the cube. The court cards can actually apply to the cube as well. If you um, put one court card on each line and then you have a cross line going from each corner crossways, that's how you could accommodate the court cards to the cube too. So you could actually say that the cube uh, could accommodate every aspect of the tarot as well. There'll be more on that later. This is supposed to, supposed to be a quick video and, and uh, maybe it's not going to be so quick, but and one last thing, one last thing to wrap this up is um, when you take the multiples of nine of the nines tables, 
it shows the forward and backward nature of reality in the numbers, okay? So what happens is you have 0, 9, and if you go out 10 spaces, it goes 9, 18, 27, 36, 45, 54, 63, 72, 81, and back to 90. This is a perfect symmetrical mirror of itself, okay? And what happens is you got 0, 9, and the first number after that is, eight, is 18, which is just a 1 and an 8, which is the alpha and the omega, you could say, or the beginning and the complete end. And it just goes through its perfect symmetry. Um, and so it starts out with the 18, which is the beginning, a 1, and the 8 is the end. And then when it's finished, it goes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. And then it, it's the complete reverse of 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. And it's a complete, perfect mirror of itself. There's actually going to be more on this. I've been working on this for a long time. This has been on the back burner forever. But there's some amazing stuff hitting, hidden within that that I have yet to reveal. And uh, I just got sidetracked. And then I just sort of lost interest in all of this stuff after I cut my hair. Which I can explain in a different video. So hopefully this will be a quick video. Thank you, uh, thank you and namaste.